Grab yourself a box of tissues. Misery May is coming back. Gemma from the wonderful channel Gem of Books and I are bringing back this readathon for a second edition. Gemma and I both love books that are horrible, miserable, and generally just very upsetting. And we basically need a support network of other readers to tell us that that's normal. So if that's you, join us this May. Last year, we based this readathon around Thomas Hardy. And while we love Hardy, while his books will be amazing choices for many of the prompts we've gone for this year, we wanted to broaden the readathon, make it more about the horrible and less about about the hardy. So it's kind of the same thing. What do you need to know about this readathon? We have a group read, it'll be on Voxer, which I'll tell you about in a moment's time. And we've created a simple three by three bingo board with all of the prompts in them. I like the bingo board because if you're a big reader, you can target all nine prompts. And if you have other things on, or you're just a normal run of the mill book a week kind of reader, like most of you, you can go for any line, horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. Frankly, I don't mind if you print out the bingo board, throw darts at it, and do those prompts. Or if you're not into throwing sharp objects, maybe you could cut up the prompts and pull them out of a hat or a jar or a jug or thin air or something. Or maybe even see how many prompts you can read without making a line. Any inventive way you use this bingo board is fine by me. And if you just want to do one prompt, you could just join in the group read. In exactly one week's time, I will be uploading a video where I recommend miserable books to Gemma and she will be doing exactly the same thing. That is, she'll be recommending books to me, not herself, because that would be kind of redundant. So make sure you're subscribed to her channel for that video and this channel too, if you're not already. So let's go through the nine prompts on the board and I'm gonna give you a few places you can start looking if you're struggling to come up with ideas. Prompt number one is animals any miserable book involving an animal. So you might want to pick The Unbearable Lightness of Bean by Milan Kandera or Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. That's if you want a dog as your animal in this. The Kite Runner has a lamb motif running through it. Flowers for Algernon is in part about a mouse. Crime and Punishment has that horrible scene with a horse in it. Watership Downs is about rabbits. And The Life of Pi is a novel about loss that has a rather important tiger in it. I've not read the story of the goat by Permau Marugan, but he isn't exactly the most cheerful of authors I know. And I think that book may work for a few future prompts. If you can think of another way to make this prompt work for you or any of the other prompts work for you, then please do that when not being prescriptive. Prompt number two is host pick. As I've already said, Gemma and I will be recommending books to each other next week. And this prompt just requires you to pick one of those books we recommend each other in that video. Illness. Now I like this one because you could be reading about mental illness or physical illness. The group read would fit this prompt, as too would Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan, The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason, Freshwater by Aquakia Maisie, My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Artessa Moshbeg, Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart, A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, Crying in Hmart by Michelle Zana, We All Want Impossible Things by Catherine Newman, Echolalia by Bryony Doyle, When Things Are Alive They Hum by Hannah Bent, The Performance by Claire Thomas, or Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies by Maddie Mortimer. Such a long list of books that I absolutely love for you to pick from for that category. Translated? Books originally written in another language. Now I've already mentioned the story of a goat. Perumal Morangan also wrote Pyre and One Part Woman, so you could go for any three of those. You might go for the French classic Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. Hugo, which literally translates to The Miserables. Or you might go for Germinal by Emile Zola, The Vegetarian by Hang Kang. Really, you could read anything by Hang Kang. Human acts is brutal. And while I'm making sweeping statements, basically anything that was written in Russian qualifies. But specifically, Anna Karenina. Ali Wiesel translated an abridged knight himself before for publishing it, although I don't think you can find the original version of it still. Frederick Backman has a reputation for writing sad novels. Minor Details by Adina Shibley. Freshwater for Flowers by Valerie Perrin. And if you want to go for something a little bit creepier, Tender as the Flesh would be a great call. There's also Bowler by Padjim Statovic. Magna by Thora 
I can never pronounce that name. It's Icelandic and has too many syllables. And the excellently named I Want to Die, But I Want to Eat Topoki. Or another book I will mention later, I Remember Abu. Lots to pick from for translated. We're up to the middle prompt and that is the group read. The group read was long listed for the 2023 Dublin Literary Awards, short listed for the 2022 Voss Literary Prize, the Stella Prize, the Age Book of the Year, the Victorian Premier's Literary Award, the Sisters in Crime Davitt Award, and it won the 2022 Miles Franklin Award. Also, it would have made my short list for my best books of the year that year. It is Bodies of Light by Jennifer Dow, a novel about a woman who was accused of killing her children and just may or may not have done it after a lifetime of institutionalised and not so institutionalised abuse. It is one of the best and the saddest, darkest and most emotional books I have ever read read. A lot of books say they're miserable and then you read a book like this and it just redefines what you call misery. There will be a Voxer group for this so you can message either me or Gemma and ask to be added to that group. If you've not used Voxer before and you want to join us it's just a messaging app. It's pretty easy to figure out. I'm very easily confused by new technology and software and I figured it out so you should be fine. But what I really love about Voxer for group reads is that you can leave both text and voice messages. So you can write a little text message that says something like up to chapter four, leave your voice message and people can listen to what you've said when they're up to the same point as you are. Right, moving on to the next prompt and it's war. Human history is full of terrible wars that dehumanize the people of the region. And you might want to read Black Butterflies, a book about the breaking up of Yugoslavia. Earlier I mentioned I Remember Abu, which is a book about the war that led to the independence of Bangladesh. I'm not a big fan of Ernst Hemingway, but let's give the man credit credit where it's due. He could write some emotional stuff. And if you can get over all the toxicity, a farewell to arms is incredibly sad. The Kite Runner involves multiple wars in Afghanistan. Birdsong by Sebastian Fawkes is set in World War I, as to is In Memoriam by Alice Wynne. The Book Thief is about World War II. You could read Anne Frank's Diary, or another book that I've already mentioned is Night by Ali Wiesel. How We Disappeared by Jin Jin Lee is about comfort women in World War II. And the last World War novel I will recommend is the graphic novel Mouse. First They Killed My Father is about Cambodia's civil war. The Mountain Sing is set during the Vietnam War. As Long as the Lemon Tree Grows is about the recent and ongoing war in Syria. The Girl Who Smiled Beads is a memoir of a girl who survived Rwanda. The Last Girl is a memoir of a woman who was captured in war and forced into prostitution by Islamic State. Our Bodies, Their Battlefields, War Through the Lives of Women is easily the most brutal and terrifying non-fiction book I have ever read read. And if you're looking to link in the woman's prize, Brotherless Night is about the Sri Lankan Civil War. Before My Actual Heartbreaks by Tish Delaney is set during the Troubles. River Spirit by Leila Abudila is set during Sudan's War for Independence from the Ottomans. Radiance of Tomorrow by Ishmael Beach is about life trying to return to normal in Sierra Leone after their war. Or you can just go basic and read War and Peace. Immigrant. This is a contentious issue at the moment. Immigration. And there are so many issues here related to this that you can explore. Racism, family dynamics, homesickness, and basically all immigrants leave their country of birth for a reason. Places to start here might include Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi, All That's Left Unsaid by Tracy Lewin, The Fortune Men by Nadifa Muhammad, Behold the Dreamer by Imbolo Mabue, The Jungle by Upton Sinclair, Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkinson, A Woman Is No Man by Etaf Run, The Kite Runner, Home Going by Yad Gayasi, Amnesty by Aravinda Adiga, or one of my favourite and one of the most brutal and utterly miserable books I have ever read, A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. Our eighth square is feminist. 
shouldn't be too hard. Most feminist books are usually about the struggles of being a woman and books about struggles and being mistreated are usually just a little bit miserable at the very least. So suggestions for this could include The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilmore, My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones, Know My Name by Chanel Miller, Kim Jeon Born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju, My Year of Meats by Ruth Ozeki, Valley of the Dolls by Jack and Susan, Hello Mum by Bernadine Evaristo, No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood, The Vegetarian by Hung Kang, Putney by Sofka Zelinkov, The Bread The Devil Needs by Lisa Allen Augustini, or 10 Minutes and 38 Seconds In This World by Alif Shafak. And our last square is classics. Now obviously this is the best square if you wanted to fit Thomas Hardy in. George Gissing's New Grub Street would work very well. Tolstoy, The Bronte's Plath, Kafka, Steinbeck, Upton Sinclair, The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot, A Fine Balance by Rohinton Mystery, Germinal by Mamil Zola, The Road by Cormac McCarthy, If Beale Street Could Talk, or Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, Train to Pakistan by Kushwadi Singh, Woman at Point Zero by Noel Al Saadi, which would also be a very good pick for feminists. I mean, a lot of these picks could be quite good for feminists, but that one in particular. You could go for any one of Shakespeare's tragedies. I mean, they're called tragedies. Again, Les Mis, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, A Tale of Two Cities, Native Son by Richard Wright, or The Awakening by Kate Chopin, not to mention all the other classics I've already mentioned in this video. I really hope to see you join us for this readathon. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section. I'd like to thank my Patreons for all their support that allow me to dedicate time to making these videos. We also read two books a month together. So if you want to support this channel and read some books with me, I would absolutely love for you to join us there. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.